To get rich, you need leverage. Leverage comes in labor, comes in capital, or it comes through code or media. Naval Ravikant. Here's one book that's short, sweet, and concise and packs a handful of ideas about how to build wealth while developing yourself as a person. The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. In short, Naval points to four key concepts that will make you wealthy. He talks about leveraging capital and people as the more traditional ways and media and code as the newer ways to acquire wealth. Along the path of getting wealthy, he dives into happiness, decision-making, and the delicate dance between spirituality and practicality. After all, Naval promises to have the right ideas about how to get rich without being lucky. Let's look at happiness. Namal's take on happiness is a game changer. He urges us to anchor our happiness internally, disconnecting from its external circumstances. Imagine finding joy in the simple act of being present. Naval's wisdom then nudges us to appreciate the now, cultivating contentment irrespective of what we desire. I, for example, have a mindfulness practice of writing into my gratitude journal, which is a free activity to train my brain to learn to be content with the now. One concrete example is Naval's emphasis on detaching from the pursuit of material possessions. He argues that true happiness lies not in amassing things, but in freeing ourselves from the shackles of desires. He shares how he was super excited to research everything about this new car he was going to buy, only to realize that once the car arrived, it was simply an object that would not change his life profoundly. His point was that material objects, generally speaking, don't move the needle when it comes to happiness. If you are interested in learning how to live more with less, check out this video up here that I did on minimalism. Anyway, Naval's point is a good example of becoming mindful of our desires while minimizing being a slave to the hedonic adaptation treadmill, meaning buying things for a dose of dopamine release, essentially purchasing things for very temporary happiness. By the way, thank you for being here. Do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Wealth beyond money, a tapestry of freedom. Wealth creation, according Naval, it extends far beyond the traditional notion of monetary riches. It encompasses time, freedom, freedom of choice, and freedom of emotions. Naval encourages building systems and assets that generate income passively, allowing us to live our lives on our terms. Of course, this is much easier said than done. Naval points out this process can take up to a decade of time to master. Again, the four key concepts mentioned earlier are leveraging capital and people and media and code. Most of us watching this are probably most interested in the latter two and so am I. What I found particularly interesting is the concept of leverage applied to media and code. The more impactful your media and code is, the higher the chance of it reaching a larger audience, impacting people or businesses, and making you wealthy along the way. In addition, there's no minimal cost of scaling media, such as movies, books, or code, especially if we're talking about digital products. Another key ingredient of building wealth is the power of compounding, not just in financial investments, but in personal development as well. Naval illustrates how small, consistent efforts compounded over time will lead to substantial growth. He describes how he tries to play the long game whenever possible, no matter if it's related to investing or building long-term relationships. I think that's an idea worth contemplating. Warren Buffett who's in his 90s now, has invested for over 60 years. However, the vast majority of his wealth was not built until his 50th birthday. Investing at his level is not just a numbers game, but also a philosophical alignment with the right people who have a sterling reputation. Naval points out, all returns in life, whether in wealth, relationships, or knowledge, come from compound interest. So think about this. When you're making decisions about who you align yourself with and what you decide to study and learn and what you're investing in. A good question to ask is, am I interested in this for the next decade or longer? Decision-making, navigating life's crossroads. Decision-making systems and time management go hand in hand. 
Naval's framework for decision-making is a compass for anybody navigating life's crossroads. He suggests steering clear of decisions that, that necessitate continuous time management. Instead, he encourages choices that contribute to long-term growth and well-being. A vivid example is his perspective on saying no. Naval argues that saying no to seemingly good opportunities is essential for maintaining focus and preserving time. I've heard somebody say, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. If we can approach decision making from that angle, things become easier. It's true for so many decisions, whether it's the next job, whether it's do I want to date this person long term or whether it's jumping into that next business opportunity. If it's not a hell yes, stay clear. Another way of thinking about this is through the lens of Naval Ravikant's fitness trainer, who points out that if we make easy decisions, life will be hard. And if we make hard choices, our life will become progressively easier over time. Conclusion. I think the Almanac of Naval Ravikant is a treasure trove of personal development ideas. I can highly recommend this book to you if you want to bring change or improvements into your life right now, or if you're contemplating big decisions and you need to readjust your mental framework. I'm curious about what specific topic speaks to you the most, so leave me a note in the comments. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you on the flip side. Peace.